everyone, how's it going? Paul here, and today my quick tip is all about the mist pass. This is sometimes an overlooked feature in Blender, but I find it extremely useful, especially at the compositing stage, to just enhance my illustration renders um, uh, to, to give me a few extra fix. I'm going to take you through today um, where it is, um, uh, how to set it up, and, uh, and then how to use it uh, to, in, in a couple of creative ways. What I've got here is a scene that I've uh, built from some um, assets that I had lying around, and um, I've sort of just put a simp simple point lamp and done a quick two render layer composite um, for, uh, to, to apply freestyle lines over just a diffuse color with some shadows. Okay, um, and so uh, I am working in cycles at the moment. You'll see that uh, my sampling rate is fairly low. I'm rendering at about 16 samples. Um, my light paths have been dropped very, very low. And I have my now familiar uh, two render layer setup where one color takes all the color information and the second uh, does just the freestyle lines. And so if you were to go over to your scene settings, you would see that under filters, in the color uh, layer, I've got environment and services enabled. And in the freestyle layer, I've only got freestyle enabled. I'm gonna be focusing on the color uh, pass today because we need to be taking a look at a few things on uh, this particular uh, view layer properties. Now, the data here uh, under passes has got by default combined and Z, and I'm going to enable Mist. Now under light, I've got just a diffuse color because we just want the color information uh, out of uh, our scene. So um, if I was to show you the material that I have on all of these objects, you would see that it's just a straight diffuse shader. You don't really need anything else uh, because uh, out of your compositor, you can actually uh, pick out just the color of any diffuse materials in that scene. Um, I've also enabled environment and shadow so that I can get an environment pass to fill in these windows should I need to and shadow uh, because I need all of the shadow information cast by that single point light uh, to overlay over my diffuse color. Now uh, I'm going to go down to my world settings now and under world settings you'll see that another tab uh, appears called miss pass. That only appears if you enable mist in your uh, passes uh, tab in your view layer properties uh, properties tab. So if you disable mist and you go over to world, you'll see that that is no longer visible. So I'm going to enable it, go over to world settings, and let's take a look at some of these settings that we actually have. You'll see that the mist pass has a start value, and the starting distance of the mist is measured from the camera. So our viewport um, where the camera is set, that's our zero mark. And so this is telling me that by default, it begins the mist at five meters away from the camera. That means there's five meters of, of gap where mist doesn't actually work. And then there's a depth of 25, which is the distance over which the, the mist is faded through the scene. Now, if we want to see what that looks like, I'm going to go once again into my 3D viewpoint and I'm going to select this camera here. And on my camera's properties, you'll see that I'm on the viewport display, I've actually enabled mist. Now let's go into the top view here. Let's uh, scroll out and maybe I'll just go into wireframe mode so you can see it. And you'll see that the camera has got this weird orange line here with these two white dots. And what these dots correspond to are, in our world settings, our start and depth um, properties uh, in our mist pass. So this is actually showing us where the mist will actually exist in our scene. And this looks like it's going to both start a little too far away from the camera for our purposes, and it's going to stretch f way beyond uh, the boundaries of our scene. So how do we fix that? Well, we could just sort of tinker on it, at it until these lines sort of converge, but there's a tool that will make this a lot faster. Now, if you uh, toggle your left-hand side uh, toolbox over here in your viewport uh, using the T key, there's this handy measurement tool. And so by selecting that, I'm gonna click somewhere near the camera, not on it, because I don't wanna select the camera. I'm just gonna click and hold, and I'm gonna drag out a line until I get to the point where I want the mist roughly to finish. And I can sort of see that that's gonna be about 11 
meters and change. So I'm just gonna leave that there. And so what we want is for this, uh, these two dots to correspond to that. Well, let's begin by, in our mispass, set our start to zero. And automatically, you can see that that dot snaps to the camera, all right? And our depth, now that we know it's about 11 meters, let's put in 11 meters and see what happens. And our depth now goes comfortably inside the range of that, um, that scene, okay? And so now our mist settings have been set up to start at the camera and only go 11 meters deep into the scene which should be perfect for our purposes. Now, we've got this other um, option, um, which is how do we calculate the falloff? Now, in the real world, inverse quadratic is the falloff method for why when you're on a, a misty cliff on the ocean and you're looking out uh, towards the cliffs, everything seems to fade into the distance and it uses the inverse quadratic law. But for our purposes, quadratic will do just fine. I've, I've actually found that um, quadratic linear and inverse quadratic have uh, slightly different contrast. And I found for this particular scene, quadratic will give us the kind of contrast that we're requiring uh, when we're generating a mispass. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's go ahead and generate that. I'm gonna to go to the image editor and I'm gonna do a re-render because now we've mist enabled, we now have this mist output on our color render layers pass. So I'm going to go ahead and do another render. And why don't we go ahead and take a look at what the mist passed actually looks like. So there it is. I've just attached the mist to my composite out. And you can indeed see that it looks just as though the, the scene is filled with mist, but we can still pick out the details right at the back. Now, if we'd left this at 25, um, they'd be slightly clearer because that uh, end point is almost double the distance away. But we just wanna fill in this scene with this mist. And you can see that the closer objects are very dark and the further away objects are very light. This can actually double as a depth map of sorts, but I find the mist is much more useful. Now I'm gonna set up something in my, back, uh, my render setting so that we don't have to look at this and look at my tiny little nodes over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and join this area up. So we're just looking at this. And I'm going to, for the first time, enable the backdrop. Okay, so what this does, I'm just going to go view, uh, fill backdrop to available space. It gives us the total render. And uh, finally, I'm going to add another node which will allow us to see the updates in real time. Now, if I middle mouse and drag, I can drag these um, nodes anywhere on the scene so I can sort of check it out. But sometimes when compositing, this is a better method uh, of updating a scene and seeing what your nodes actually do uh, than having sort of a split screen like I have. And for these purposes, it's, it's definitely much more um, conducive to video. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shift A, output, viewer. And I'm gonna attach my final output to this viewer uh, node. Now, if I open that up, you can see that looks very much like the composite window, which I'll just shut down uh, look, I'll get rid of uh, altogether and I'll substitute it with my viewer uh, right now, but we will need that in the end. So what do we have here? Well, we've got our render layer color where I've mixed the shadow and diffuse color very simply over a mix node. And now if I was to increase that factor, the shadow is 100%, as you can see here. And if I was to decrease it ever so slightly, the shadows are blended. And then they, in turn, are uh, mixed in with our freestyle uh, render pass to give our lovely line work that you can sort of see here, okay? So what I'm gonna do, uh, the, the, the first uh, way I'm gonna use this mist pass is to actually fade out those shadows as we go into the scene. So I'm gonna use the mist pass as a factor to mix together the shadow and color information. Now it's going to, uh, I'm gonna take you step by step um, to show you how this actually works. First off, let's connect that mist pass to the factor, okay? And all of a sudden you can see that it does the reverse of what we want. We've got very light shadows in the foreground, very dark shadows in the background. But we can change this in uh, using two simple methods. The first is we wanna mix the diffuse color over the shadow. So we reverse that and by reversing 
what goes in first in the top image slot and the bottom image slot, we can actually reverse that information altogether. Mix is working just fine. You can also use value and add gives us a slightly subtle effect where you can still see some of those shadows. Okay, so that's one way of using the mist pass. So another way I like to use the mist pass is to use it as a gradient to uh, color fill very quickly um, a scene that just sort of needs a bit of a color mood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift A, add another mix node here, and I'm going to place my combined diffuse color and shadow on the bottom slot here, but this is going to go in before I mix it in with the line work. Okay, and I've put it on the bottom for a very good reason. Now I'm going to select a color. Uh, let's make this sort of a nice bluish purple, something sort of a nighttime scene. And I'm going to make the mist the factor by which it mixes these two operations. And I'm going to flick this over to value, all right. Uh, and what this does is now you can see that you've got this really nice mood lighting effect where the color is strongest in the foreground and lightest in the background. Now, of course, if we were to reverse that and put this um, on the top, what I'm gonna do is just disconnect it for a second, grab that color swatch and drop it on the bottom here. And now I'm gonna do this on the bottom. And if we were to mix that, you can see that the higher values are what uh, keys it to be a stronger color. And so that's why I reverse this and stick that on value again, um, so that I can get that sort of dark to light fade out. Now, the other thing that you have control over is how intense that color is. See, this color swatch isn't just a color that you pick, but you've also got this value slider. And so if you increase the value, you can see that at the top, the color seems to be much flatter. It's a, almost as if the mist pass doesn't work at all. But if you go down the color uh, to a lower value, you can see that it almost increases the contrast so dramatically that uh, you get a much uh, deeper um, gradient, as it were. And so you can use that color swatch um, to also enable how much color there is in the foreground and background. And, and the mist pass just sort of like keys off that value system, as it were. Uh, so that's a, another way that I like to use this mist pass. And of course, uh, changing that color to pretty much anything you want, say you wanted to uh, a nice blood red or a sort of an afternoon burnt orange, that's quite nice. Um, or some sort of a, a foresty green or aquamarine type thing. Um, that color fill uh, basically sets your overall color and then the mist pass is the gradient by which it um, changes that color um, based on the values uh, of that uh, composition. So I'm just gonna leave it there on that uh, nice deep uh, bluish purple, which, which I really like. Um, okay, so hope you guys get a few um, useful tips out of this quick tip tutorial for today. Um, so please subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's more stuff coming up. And if you're feeling generous, of course, there's always the Patreon page where you can show your support and get exclusive content as a reward for that support. Um, but uh, this is me signing off for today. Thanks for watching guys, bye for now.